I'm Rad and welcome to Good Game Well Played. Today we're going to answer the age-old question. How do you present all the fun and strategy of a third-person shooter, but make it suitable for kids? Or was it squids? N no, it was definitely kids. It's Splatoon! This ain't no paint-by-numbers shooter. Splatoon has you take on the role of a trendy kid in a post-apocalyptic world where the human race has been replaced by fashionable squid people. Yep, that's the game's law. They could have gone with anything and they went with humans are replaced by fashionable squid people. Which, after the year we've had, sounds kind of plausible. And inviting. Instead of painting the battlefield with your enemy's blood, you'll be using your team's brightly coloured ink. You can still shoot your opponents, of course, simply blasting paint in their face till they explode, but that comes secondary to the larger objective of ground control, making sure your team splats more surface area. It's like the tasteful version of dogs marking their territory. Teams consist of four players, each equipped with weapons and special items that form some vague classes. All the usual fare is here, with the water gun-like splatter shots taking the role of assault weapons, charges replacing sniper rifles, and paint rollers playing similarly to shotguns. Where Splatoon differs is that the weapons are required to fill two roles, painting the ground and fighting off enemies. Because of this, team construction is as important in Splatoon as it is in games like Overwatch. You need players who can focus on painting large areas of ground, while others keep an eye out for rival squidlets, and fill in the harder to reach spots. Gotta get in those nooks and crannies. It even has a perk system, which I can only describe as COD fashion. Oh shit, cause COD's a fish and Splatoon's got squids. See what I did there? Different items of clothing will provide different abilities, such as shorter cooldowns or increased speed. Fashionable and practical. I like that a lot. Combine this with the 91 different weapons, each with their own set of sub and special weapons, and you've got yourself a stew going. And by stew, I mean deep metagame. Deep like the Mariana Trench, lots for you to dive into. The biggest difference from other shooters is the movement and reload systems. This mechanic alone makes for some incredibly tense and strategic moments. Is there an inkling with a roller hiding in that ink for me? Do I speed across the map painting everything, or do I need to stay back where there's heaps of ink to keep my weapon reloaded? Why is this cat so fat? Has he been eating the squid kids that don't perform so well in this world that's so obviously built around breeding unstoppable child soldiers? Yeah, Splatoon asks a lot of important questions that aren't commonly explored in your usual shoot-em-up, making it a prime choice for competitive players who are looking for something a little bit different. So if Splatoon is eSports ready, why do we hear so little about it? Is this another case of the giant squid where they're just so deep underwater that we can never photograph them, but we know that they're there, biding their time, waiting till we're at our weakest so they can rise up and destroy us, and we know they exist because their bodies just keep washing up on the shore? To answer that question, I fished out two of Sydney's finest. I'm joined now by Hero and Vicky Bird, who are involved in organizing competitive Splatoon events across Australia. Hi guys, how are you going? Good, thanks. Yeah, Thank I'm you so good, much. Thanks. That's good. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, so Splatoon has been around for about a year and a half now. How has the scene changed both here and overseas in competitive terms? So Splatoon initially had a lot of in-game events, which were called the Splatfests, and that ended uh, about half a year ago. I think the competitive scene has really taken off after that, like when they've stopped patching the game and um, a, like a meta could develop. So in the time since then, overseas, there has been Nintendo-sponsored tournaments in Japan, Europe, and America. In Australia, we don't really have much of that right now. We've had online tournaments since around April um, that was organized by Oceanic Offensive. I fast forward to September and Bicky Bird got in touch with me because we realized we were both from Sydney. We started talking about wanting to do a LAN tournament. Yeah, because Adelaide, they, they had one previously and we're like, why is Adelaide having a Splatoon events? Why can't Sydney have Sydney? one? <laughs> yeah. Sydney's a big city. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we were just <clears throat> chatting on Discord and that's when I met Hero and we're like, why don't we make this happen? Yeah. I got in touch with Nintendo saying, hey, we're holding a Splatoon event in Sydney. Would it be possible if you could help us out anyway? And 
they surprisingly responded <laughs> and they were like, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> They said we can give you a bunch of prizes, and so they sent us caps, stickers, and also amiibo, and we d we were just over the moon about yeah. that. And so yeah. yeah, we advertised the event. Yeah, they got a lot of people excited. Yeah, they really wanted the caps. Yeah. <laughs> That's also kind of exciting because I feel like historically Nintendo have like shied away a little bit from having events and having those kinds of things in streaming. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and you know historically they kind of haven't supported. Smash is a competitive yeah. thing. So what do you think it is about Splatoon that's got them excited that they do want to support it? I think being a team game is part of it because mm -hmm. when people think esports they think like League of Legends and Counter-Strike and that's that's got that team dynamic that like most other sports do as well. The one thing that I really love about like competitive gaming and esports and stuff like that is the kinds of communities that it builds because you just get all these like crazy passionate people who like like you guys who are just like we love this game, we want to play it competitively, let's make it work. Let's yeah. figure out like a way to put on a LAN tournament because it just seems like a great thing to do. Yeah. yeah. It's really yeah. exciting. One of the other motivations that I wanted um, a LAN tournament is because Australia's internet isn't great yeah. and having a connection from <laughs> Perth to Sydney, we had some really shaky tournaments happen because of that kind of thing as well. Yeah. Are you seeing um, people participating skew younger than maybe other kind of esports events because Splatoon is suitable for kids? Yes, yeah? definitely. And we did, I set up my LAN so that it would finish before sundown because <laughs> yeah. a lot of oh, like the 13 so year olds had to go home before yeah. dark. And yeah. That's actually really awesome yeah. and it's exciting to kind of see something that can build around younger gamers as well because, mm -hmm. you know, usually like your CODs, your. Um, Dota even and League of Legends, those are all kind of M-rated yeah. um, and a lot of kids play them anyway mm -hmm. but Splatoon is like, no, this is this <laughs> is for you, this is inviting, this is um, yeah. this is totally appropriate. Mm. Yeah, and um, I think Spl Splatoon isn't just a kids game, it's like an all ages game yeah, and like at our LAN tournament we also had like some older people um, attend as well, like some middle-aged men. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Full range. Yeah, yeah it do was you, really good. Do you think that Splatoon is very heavily like reactionary based? Or is it more kind of slower skill strategy based? Oh, it's a very fast paced. Very, yes. very fast yes. paced. Matches are five minutes at most Anything and you die happen. so quickly. Imagine Overwatch but every shot is a headshot. Right. That's what this game is. Right. <laughs> so what drew you guys to Splatoon over another competitive game? That's an interesting question. Um, when Splatoon first came out, I really didn't have any idea what it was about. I thought because it's squid kids. Yeah, <laughs> because it was a Nintendo game. I thought it was about Blooper the squid from Mario. I don't know what that is, but that was completely wrong. And I've never played shooting games before. Um, but then when I started playing, I just got hooked. I don't know why. Um, the concept was really cool. I mean, you're a kid, and then you shoot ink and then you turn into a squid and you can swim through your ink. Like, wow, that's like, that's amazing. <laughs> I was a bit skeptical as well because I, I don't really have a background in shooting games either. Mm. Um, but then I just played the demo that they released and then I was just like, oh wow, I love this, I have to like buy it day one. And then I've been playing it ever since. I think because the matches are so short and then so much can happen, like so every game is just really exciting and dynamic and I think that's what I love about the game. Yeah, it's interesting that you both kind of hit on it's sort of like a shooter game for people that don't necessarily mm. play shooters or mm. aren't necessarily drawn to shooters. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really great because like shooting is such a bread and butter mechanic in gaming but not everybody necessarily actually wants to like shoot things. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is kind of like, you're still using that mechanic but it's very different and it, it uses it very differently mm -hmm. in kind of a more positive way as well. There's also a variety of weapons you don't necessarily have to shoot. For example, um, the main weapon I use is a brush, like a paintbrush, yeah. and so you flick ink at your opponents, and there's rollers as well, and you can just like throw <laughs> ink at people, and there's also buckets, so it's yeah. not necessarily shooting, but you do projectile ink at the opponents. Yeah. With the release of the Nintendo Switch coming up, how do you think that's going to affect Splatoon? Because they did have in the trailer for the Switch that big... <clears throat> like stadium Splatoon, very cool tournament thing. Do you think that that's gonna become a reality or do you think they're just teasing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it becomes a reality. I think yeah. like that was the exact same venue that Smash at Evo was held in. <laughs> so if Smash can do it, I think Splatoon can do it too. Like how you just tell? You just see the room and you're like, I know. Everyone's um, pretty excited for Splatoon on the Switch because 
To play Splatoon competitively, especially in a LAN event, it's quite difficult because you need a monitor and you need a Wii U for each person, compared to games such as Smash, four people or up to eight people can play with one console. So that's a lot easier. So yeah, we had to do a lot of setup for our Splatoon LAN. Whereas with the Switch, it looks portable, um, might be a lot easier for us to play at LAN events. So yeah. everyone's and pretty I've, excited. Based on the Switch trailer, it looks like each Switch um, module can connect to each other wirelessly as well. So the venue that we had for the LAN, we had to make sure that we had like really good internet that can support like every single console and not have one of them randomly drop out. So if the switch can like all communicate with each other without having an external internet source, then I think that would be great as well. Yeah. Do you think it's gonna affect gameplay if you don't have the tilt controls with the switch? Yes. Yeah, we still we still, we still, don't, <laughs> still know don't know about yeah, that. Exactly, and yeah. I'm like getting pretty anxious. And I guess we'll find out in January. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when they reveal more about the Switch. It would it would kind of fling the entire competitive scene backwards, wouldn't it? Because it's like it's the same game, but then it's very different because the controls would be. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's hoping the controls stay the same because we're all used to it. Yeah. It's such a. Your 900 part. hours. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's stuff from scratch. <laughs> Yeah. Oh dear, that would be... If that happened to me with, like, Dota... Yeah. Mm. Imagine playing Dota with sticks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone's watching this and they're interested in getting into the Australian Splatoon scene, where can they start? They can find us on Twitter at Oceanic Squids and on Facebook at Oceanic Offensive. Yep. We mostly have our community in a Discord server, mm -hmm. but you can find links to that through the Twitter or the Facebook. I love how everything's still like related to squids. Do you guys feel a stronger affinity for squids now? Yeah, a lot of people colloquially <laughs> refer to this game as Squid Game and not Splatoon. Yeah. yeah. Everyone just calls it Squid Game. Just the Squid Game. Yeah. And now when you see squids in the wild, you're just like, oh. Squid. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's stop yakking and let's get splatting. Okay. Cool. So we're set up now with two Wii U's and I'm gonna jump in a party with Bicky Bird and we're gonna play some Splatoon while Hero gives me some tips. But first I wanna spend all of Toby's money and uh, do the fashion thing. Uh, I wanna buy I wanna buy some new shoes. Uh, Those are pretty cool. The punk whites. Mm. I like the punk whites. <laughs> uh, no, I don't like any of these. <laughs> what, do we, what have we got in clothing? This is ugly. I like it. See, yeah, so each of the different um, clothes have a main ability and also sub abilities. And right. So do you want to buy ones that have like more sub abilities? That you we can increase the number of sub abilities on a weapon, but it's really expensive. It costs thirty thousand, which she doesn't have. <laughs> well, especially not after I buy this ugly shirt. It's oh wow, that is now. An ugly shirt. <laughs> So there's a lot of different kinds of weapons besides just your typical um, guns. There's also brushes, paint buckets. I like the brush actually, it's cool. Um, the different guns have different amounts of range as well. And there's also blasters and SMGs, sniper rifles. So your typical kind of shooter fail and also rollers and brushes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll go with the paint roller. Okay. Is the paint roller good? Yeah, I think it'll be useful for you. There's two yeah, different like rollers. Oh. Um, just they don't, they have different sub abilities and Special different specials. Kraken. I think the Kraken will be fun for you. Cool. If you yeah, can. Kraken sounds fun. Yeah. Let's crack on and play some Splatoon. Hey. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Squad more like squid. Am I right? Squid. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect reaction. <laughs> Bad zones is King oh, of the Hill, yeah, okay. and there's a specific zone that you need to focus on. And if you hold that for 100 seconds, then you win, okay. regardless of whether the timer runs out or not. So, um, you can't squid over grating, so that's good. You just run right over it. Good. Okay. Um, so you can flick ink and then you hold it down to ah. hold it down to keep covering the ground. But yeah, you, but not uh, if you do. But not if you do. Okay, so you've. We're I winning! Think, <laughs> I think Bicky Bird is killing everyone. Okay. I'm helping. So jump down there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And this is where we want to cover. Yeah. So they're going to be like all coming down from up there. And also sometimes from the right. Ooh, ah! we got someone! But then they got you. So it's all good. We're killing it though, look. Only yeah, 50 you, you seconds left. <laughs> yeah. 
try to swim mm. more if it's already covered because you're faster when you're swimming. So you're going well, on the right, the right side, which is not where the point is. Wait, where am I? Where's, okay, it's over there. Yeah. 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 Oh, yep, when yep. the um, when the zone changes sides, there's a penalty that's applied to the team who lost it. He, who lost it? So now you have an additional Hello? 48 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> there was some serious lag there. And there's also um, the quick jump ability that lets you get back into the battlefield um, quickly after you respawn, and it also <laughs> lets you. Um, It also lets you jump back to your spawn like a pan portal spell. Ooh, they ambush you with a the roller. There's a lot of rollers in this game as well. Yeah, okay, so if you okay. want to super jump, then you can just um, press on one of the, your allies' names. Don't swim through the grating! <laughs> <laughs> okay. We. Oh, that's cool! Why are you over here? Because she's a sneaky, sneaky squid. All right, so now you're on the opposite side and you need to get back around. Um, it's on your yep, right. Yep, yep. Okay. Jump, 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 jump. No, 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 no. Okay, so you're in control again and now that you've taken it back, the, the enemy team has a penalty applied to them. Oh, so wait, what's the penalty you. again? It's the extra seconds underneath. Oh, thanks, oh. Spike. <laughs> So the extra seconds, it's, oh, okay, so more seconds that they have to get rid yeah. of. Right. Well, you're just too deep. Oh, that person just died, so you, you have to be careful. Ah! Uh, uh. Yeah. Learning when to uh, super jump and um, where to super jump is like really important as well. Um, because you generally want to just super jump to someone who is in a safe spot. So Angela was deep, but then she was kind of like, on her own without the enemy really knowing that she's there, so it, she, she was actually safer to jump to, rather than someone who's like in the thick of it all. Okay, so you're building up your charge and you almost have enough to use your Kraken. And don't forget, when you want to use it, just click down on the right stick. So not yet, oh, someone just fell into the room. So you, your Kraken... Should I Kraken? Kraken, should I Kraken, should I Kraken? Kraken, when you, you can use it as a panic button because you're invincible when you're in the Kraken mode. Mate, I'm always panicking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a constant state Okay, there's someone on your left. Kraken! There you go. And to attack with the Kraken, you have to jump rather than... Uh, yeah. Okay, well, Kraken's uh, over. Kraken's over! Oh, no! Oh, you got... You, you traded hey! with them. Let's take <clears> that. Um, I can hear her over there doing a lot more than I am. Okay. Now you're back. Hello. And has been stopped. Ooh, they took it back and now you have 49 extra seconds. To no, go no, <laughs> go underground. Yeah. So um, if they're in control and they have more time, when the timer runs down, there will be overtime. So um, they have another chance to like take back the lead. So you have to focus on um, getting it back like as quickly as possible before the timer runs can down. Can I jump over that? Yeah, you can, but I don't recommend oh. it. <laughs> just yeah, so that path on the right side is where it's... Oh, they're about to oh no, 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 no! You lost the lead. Vicky Bad, fix it! <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was close. That was a really close match. Was it? Well, thank you so much for joining me, guys, and teaching me all about Splatoon and having some games with me. It was really fun. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, um, well, that is it for Well Played this week. Now, next week we'll be doing an Ask Well Played. It is the last Well Played for the year, and I've already got all of your questions, so I'm very excited to give you my answers. But in the meantime, if you want to internet hang out with me, you can follow me on Twitter, at Ankaradio. Until next time, don't be toxic on the internet. Right out. Squid Kids, let's play again. Can we play again? <laughs> I'm joining.